Welcome to Comic Con 2014. I'm surrounded by a few friends here. Batman that you can see behind us appears in chapter three of our graphic novel when we talk about the Gotham Fall. But we're here to talk to an artist called Amanda Tribble who's doing our chapter on Miss Hood and she's over here. So we better ditch the stormtroopers and go and talk to her. Hi, my name's Amanda Eleanor Tribble. I'm a comic artist and illustrator. Um, I'm currently studying um, illustration at um, the University of Lincoln. I'm in my third year, so it's all very busy. Um, mostly um, I draw um, and self-publish my own comics. Um, so I've done a variety of pro projects um, from web comics to adapting um, Victorian poetry to um, just short self-contained stories. First I sort of usually write up a script or someone writes up a script for me and then um, I break it down and um, into pages. I do thumbnails, usually by hand, because that's an easier process. Um, I then usually scan those in, take them into Photoshop, um, do my pencils digitally. And then depending on what suits the project, I either print them out and um, ink them traditionally, or I ink digitally. I then scan everything back in if I've inked traditionally, um, get the pages clean, and then add any color, effects, tones, whatever I want in Photoshop, letter the pages, and export them either for print or for the web. I'm here at Nottingham Comic Con today to um, sell some of the comics I've self-published. Um, this book is called Maud Clare. It's based on the Christina Rossetti poem of the same name. Now, because it's a Victorian poem, it's done in a ink and um, ink wash style because it sort of, it's black and white, so it sort of suits the period. Um, and then all the um, verses are um, hand-lettered um, and spreads, so it all works nicely together. So Sync Up is um, a book um, that I wrote and um, drew myself. Um, it's about a bunch of teenage psychics um, because I think I'm sort of really interested in the paranormal. Um, so this one um, I wanted to do some spot colour because I'd done some spot colour work from uni, really liked how that went um, and decided to try it out on my own books and see if I liked it. So um, it's a sort of yeah short self-contained um, black, white and the spot colours um, and it's, it's, it's probably very different in tone. Dawn the Unread, I'm illustrating a story called Miss Hood. Uh, it's a modern day adaptation of Robin Hood. I was given a poem by Ali Stoneman. Uh, so what I first did was sort of split up the verses and work out, so I had a page limit, so I needed to work out how much I could fit on each page. Some of the pa verses translated much more visually than others did. So that was a challenge to try and work out what I could display visually and what I couldn't, um, and what I had to put into the story to make it work. Um, I then penciled, um, I'm inking, um, I'll colour it digitally um, and it all sort of works um, and there's, it's nice because some of the um, text is spoken text so the, the poetry is all in um, caption boxes but the text that's spoken sort of flows into the comic much more so it's quite interesting as a process to try and work poetry into comics. So of course I'm collaborating with someone who lives in a different city to me um, so we have to work via email and Skype um, to try and put the project together. So we, you know, they email me the script, I email them back some roughs, they email me back giving me feedback, I email them back corrections. So it's, it's a very back and forth process collaboratively. I don't just take the script, go away, do it all myself and then hand it back. And suddenly someone goes, well, what is this? This isn't what we wanted. But it's, it's instead very collaborative, which is nice. I grew up um, drawing, but really, like, in my early years, I was quite into maths because my parents are physicists. But I sort of fell in love with comics at about the age of 12 when sort of manga really started getting going in the UK. And that was sort of a revelation that you could tell stories in that way through a visual medium. Um, and so I, I grew up on manga and I grew up on manga done by UK artists and that was what was really exciting to me, the fact that I could also make comics, which was an idea completely foreign to sort of 14 year old me. So I've been drawing my own stuff since the age of 15. Uh, I now influence more by sort of um, Western independent stuff, um, um, like people who are trying new things with superhero comics. Um, I like um, Glyn Burns. Glyn Dillon's now of Brown, um, Dan Berry, um, Emma Vercelli, um, like people who are working 
around the scene today are people who influence me most and just seeing everyone else's work and seeing it feed back into my own and seeing them feed into other people a lot. That's what I love about the UK comic scene is it's very collaborative it's, and everyone sort of knows each other and that's good. So one great thing about sort of the web coming up is that it's now so much easier for people, like the entry level has got a lot lower, so it's very easy for people to create comics and put them online, to communicate with other artists via Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and all those things. I prefer um, flat copies, um, printed copies, um, just because it's easier to flick through and read very quickly. Um, but it's really exciting to see everyone put stuff up on the web and um, Seeing kids make comics these days, like really young kids, the age sort of 12 or so making comics is so exciting after sort of a dearth. I can't remember much about comics for kids being around when I was little. So it's just, it's exciting to see everyone being passionate and making and loving and reading. And that's just great. I'm afraid I can't really talk about comics anymore because suddenly the Empire has turned up and they are watching. So you'll have to check everything out online.